early 1950s Motorola black and white console television part two. Let's actually make it work in this part. Let's make picture on this thing. Uh, part one was an analysis. This is probably like 1950, 51. And right off the bat, if someone would like to adopt this and save it be from becoming a dog bed or a cat tray or a hamster wheel, um, contact me and come get it. I think this would actually be decent restore candidate when we get done. Uh, like I said, it's a Motorola. I think Motorola... Motorola is very unique. They're, the circuits in this thing sort of drive me crazy because they're not not conventional. And yes, it comes with the built-in tic-tac-toe board there. Uh, it does need to be restored, but the CRT, I, I think, will make an okay picture. It's not great. It's not dead. Uh, it was waking up in part one. In part one, I was able to achieve just a vertical line, no vertical deflection. That's very common with these this era of sets. They all have vertical problems, mostly due to capacitors, but not always. I discovered sort of at the end of part one that the audio output tube is bad. You can see it's gone to air. And this actually makes a huge difference because most of the voltages for the set come off of the cathode of this thing, including the screen voltage. I was researching the schematic. The screen voltage for the horizontal output comes off of this thing. So I don't know how we were getting any high voltage with that tube in that condition. Uh, that is a 6W6, and I was doing some research on that. This is a 6V6, and this is a 6L6. And the 6W6 is between these two. The 6V6 is like, say, 1 watt. The 6W6 is, say, 3 watts. And the 6L6 is 5 watts. And these two are a suitable substitute for that. Well, unfortunately, they, they got this thing so cramped in here... There's no way this will fit. This is not going to fit in place. So we might have to go with the 6V6, which is the, the less heavy duty of the two possible substitutes. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get the chassis out. And the other thing this had was it originally had a field coil speaker. Well, I guess that, that is a field coil speaker. It's just not the right field coil speaker. It's a TS-351, it's in Riders Volume 10. I think it would probably be preferable to take the CRT off. Um, I don't even really see what's holding the CRT on there because this is loose. It should really just be sort of laying there. I think the yoke is disintegrating which could be a problem. Um, this really sort of has the worst of the worst capacitors in it. Look at the high voltage stuff is in here underneath. Very cool Motorola. Uh, this this really has sort of the worst of the worst in capacitors. It has all these black bumblebee thingies. And these are these have to go. I mean we can resurrect it but Hopefully someone adopts this and restores it. All of these have to go. Probably got they're probably cracked and shorted and leaky and yeah, these things suck. It looks like that has been replaced right here. We got these two 
sort of modern resistors right here. I, I don't believe that's factory, but I think the thing to do here is to get the CRT off and sort of clean this up with a paint gun and uh, paint gun, yeah, paint gun, clean it with air gun and a uh, paintbrush. That does not look factory right there. I'm sure we'll find a whole bunch of stuff here that's, this does have some discs. So, well, this is something different. Not that this whole TV isn't something different, but I wonder, wonder if this was an aftermarket add-on or if this was an afterthought. They had to clean something up, some type of interference. Um, this is definitely a rebuild. No other information than that. Since we did actually have light out of the CRT on this in part one, I think it's a good idea to mark the ion trap. That way we kind of know, you know, this side was up and it was about right here. And I think this will pull out if I get these off which I'll mark this too. Air pain. Just kind of mark that. That way we know that's about straight up. Yeah. I intentionally didn't clean this because you can clearly see the carpet marks here as to where what was and that's the reason why. So this should just lift off of here the chassis should just lift up off of it and I have one of those small test tubes maybe we'll try that on this set uh, one of the things that B Anderson TV uses the master himself of course which this TV will not be restored like it should be like he would do it this is a fun thing crash and burn the dag is failing on this tube, which uh, if I clean it, it's going to be very, very, very gently because it's, uh, you don't want this to come off. This is your filter capacitor right here for the high voltage. So there's the chassis. I'll take that and clean that up. And then we'll go through it with the test CRT and we'll see if we could get it to work. Seems like it'll be fairly convenient. I might take that bracket off the front. That's sort of annoying. Oh, here's the tube chart. I'll have to do my best not to blow that away with the compressor. Um, yeah, this is, this is, ooh, there's our spider. This is a little bit too dirty even for me to work on. Yeah, this is this has got to get cleaned. Very first thing, uh, uh, brush and looks like there was a serial number or something there that fell off. Yeah, we'll clean this and then we'll make working again. Got a. Um, field coil magnet we're going to have to bypass there to work on it. Oh wow. There's rust under there. Oh crap. Always be aware of the hidden capacitor. See that right there? And those will short and screw the thing up. So that needs to be changed. 
We got our chassis here indoors. Big killer rainstorm. We're all going to die. We're going to try and get it to work. It's all been cleaned up as best I could clean it. I even glued the sticker back on. Um, I'm going to be using an isolation transformer. This does have a power transformer, but as I've been over in I think part one, this is only partial. This is a hot chassis set. Just because you see a power transformer, don't assume that it's not hot chassis. This is just for the tube filaments. The line is connected directly to the chassis. That's why we got these, I believe that's why we got these isolation feet here. Well, it looks like I printed out the wrong freaking schematic. There are two of these sets. One of them is um, uh, series string and the other one is not but I think they're pretty much the same other than that you can see that one side of the line is connected directly to the chassis here so always verify um, I grabbed this because I thought it might be fun this is a, a radar tube so this is a 7 5LP7 or whatever they call it. This is a long persistence green phosphor and I'll uh, show you that real quick. I don't think it's going to work very well but at least we'll be able to see if we get vertical deflection. So check this out. I'll just take the flashlight on my phone look at that Hi. See that? That's what you call long persistence. It's almost like those glow in the dark uh, stickers and stuff. So yeah, I, I don't think this will make a pretty good, a very good TV tube. I mean, it might be kind of interesting to watch the evening news on that. Let's start off with a little box opening. This was sent in by a viewer who I guess is older and sort of retiring from his radio repair hobby, which is sort of a sad thing to hear. I, I don't ever expect to retire from fixing things until I'm uh, permanently retired into the incinerator. Um... I'm going to open this. Let's take a look. Hopefully these are supposed to be just components from his radio repair hobby. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see if we can use any of this stuff on the Motorola TV. I do appreciate it when people donate stuff to the channel. It, none of it goes unused. Um, I, I sort of store it away if I don't use it immediately. So... And then uh, I try and put just about everything people donate back into this this here channel. Capacitor sorting meter. What is a capacitor sorting meter? Your Belinda, California. Four microfarads. Picofarads. Four picofarads. So is this for testing capacitors or just identifying them so you can sort them out? We'll have to take a look. Alright, so this is... Uh, these are just resistors. Just... Uh, Which are which are good? 390 ohm. These are these are good because these are uh, higher wattage resistors. Uh, I very I, I very rarely sort. I very rarely change resistors and stuff I work on. I very rarely find bad resistors causing a problem. Uh, I have a massive collection of resistors, which is a good thing because 
If I do need them, I have them. Okay, we have some capacitors here. Just radios. So, very good. Uh, got some electrolytics here. And um, definitely the most common capacitor that I use is 0 0.047 or 0 0.05. And this is a 472, so that's 0047. Now we'll get to this in the schematic, so remember this. 47, is that 472 or 473? I'm going blind here. All right, so it's 473. So this is the most common one, 0 0.047 or 0 0.05. So 473, see right there, 47 with three zeros. So 047, 47 with three zeros. And then over here is a 005, which is 50 with three zeros. In fact, here's a 503, which is negligible, negligible, whatever. I just went court TV on myself. Uh, negligibly, whatever, I'm done. Um, but I will say this. I never, I never order the, uh, the uh, .05. I always just order .047 because .047 is a standard number these days. You're going to pay way more for a 0.05 than a 0.047 or a 0.5 or a 5 versus a 4.7 it's just the way they do the numbering now well this is kind of cool it seems like it's okay at reading the lower picofarad capacitors which this will be useful for IF cans so this is this is great so thank you very much this stuff will definitely get used I pulled out all the uh, I pulled out the all the 047s here for this TV project. Like I say, this is the most common right here. I would love to run into a surplus of a few thousand of this value. 04705 at 600 volts, 630 volts. Because this is definitely the most common in these old sets. And radios too. On this set, the flyback and high voltage rectifier are in here and access to the bottom of a couple of the electrolytics is in here. First thing I want to do is just take the capacitor ESR tester and check the electrolytics since this has been turned off for a week. Uh, the capacitor tester does not like voltage. Another note I should, I got a question about this. This is only good for really, really only good for electrolytics. Checking the e, 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 e S R. Really having trouble today. This is good for checking the ESR only on electrolytics really above a, like a half a microfarad. So this is really more intended for modern sets like that have the small capacitors. But we can use it on this. Um, it doesn't tell you if they're shorted. It doesn't tell you if they're leaky. It doesn't tell you if they're going to get hot and blow up and smoke. All it does is tells you if they're open or not, or high ESR. So it doesn't tell you the capacitance. It's not good for these small value paper capacitors. It's totally useless for those. It just replace them anyway. Don't even waste your money on something like this. Just replace them. It's probably a better way to go. But for entertainment value, I'm going to get this... I'm going to get this box off here and we'll check them. Okay, there's the flyback. I should have opened this up and cleaned it. Um, there's one thing here that I think is probably one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. Only Motorola. So this right here is the horizontal size. This adjustment right here. And look at what this does. It, it adjusts 
the spacing in the flyback core. See that? It moves the, the core up and down. That is Roji Tweeblet Dizylazeber. And then this is the horizontal centering, and this is a pot right here. So this is horizontal size, and it adjusts the spacing in the flyback core. Now continuing to look at this, this almost looks like the, uh, the flyback is failing. Like That's like carbon tracking and arcing. We have our dead spider here. Um, that that's not a good look right there there's also this red stuff sprayed in here and I don't know what the point of that is is that like corona dope what's what's going on what is this red stuff this capacitor here has been disconnected and I believe it's been replaced with that Didn't, didn't do a fully thorough job at cleaning this thing. I tried. I spent an hour on it, but it's still like nastacular. So I think this is the most interesting thing, though, the adjustable size flyback core. But that, that right there is concerning. So I wonder if when we get the high voltage up to what it's supposed to be, if that's going to start to arc. Because in the previous video, we had a bad... Uh, audio output tube which supplies the cathode supplies voltage to the IF but it also supplies the screen voltage to the horizontal output so if, if that's that's why we had low high voltage we had like 4000 volts well when we get when we get it up to 14000 is that going to start to flame out that's what I'm wondering anyway I went through and checked the capacitors they're all good except this one which is the audio output stabilizing capacitor. It's the one on the double diode detector. Really don't care about that. Uh, I think I'll go over them and check them one more time. But yeah, a few interesting things in here. The other thing I'm going to do is lube the pots, but this, this might be a deal killer right here. Checking this electrolytic, uh, we're at like 1 ohm below 1 ohm there. On this side we are... I could get to it like a little bit over one ohm so we're okay okay checking this four section one and we already know it's not leaky or shorted because we had this set powered up in part one but I'm gonna just check all four sections so this is and it's kind of hard to get through this red paint but section one section two real hard to get through this red paint section three and section four so it's a little tired but fully usable I have the field coil bypassed I am measuring uh, let's see here let's go up to 200 volts I'm measuring the cathode of the audio output tube which I replaced because it was a white cap and that's where most of the voltages in the set come from so that should be I think about 150 volts I got our little radar CRT in here alright let's just see what happens here oh boy that kinda went off the charts 200 volts must have a leaky capacitor in order for that to happen I do have the plate cap disconnected here. 125 volts. I'm going to hook this up and we'll see what happens. I don't know if anything's going to happen. Oh, 
Well, this is not even glowing. All right, well, now it's glowing. Let's see what happens here. Uh, ooh, there we go. Brightness. Interesting, it's not green. It's like a bright whitish blue. And yeah, the persistence is kind of long. But still no vertical. We're at 125 volts here. Checking pin 4, the horizontal output tube. This is supposed to be 150 volts. Uh, 155 volts. And this, I switched using the schematic on the phone. This, this comes from the audio output tube, which is not happening. See if we can get the vertical working. Maybe that'll help us fix some of the other issues, like the low high voltage. Uh, we'll start with the plate, which is number one. You do not want to measure this when the thing is working. So I'm on number one here. Got 398 volts, which sort of suggests that... Um, we could go to AC, I guess, here. Yeah, there's really no AC. 20 volts AC, that's probably horizontal. Uh, could look at that with a scope, I guess. And let's see, 2 should be 112 volts. And we have 34 volts. 3 should be 142 volts. I'm going to get it in the hole, which is low, 157. Uh, I don't think you're really going to get anything on 6, 7, and 8 unless the oscillator is running. Well, let's see if 7 is negative. 9, 8, 7... Negative five uh, and eight. It doesn't tell you what eight should be. Ground, maybe a little bit negative. Uh, ground. So it's like it's kind of maybe running a little bit. It could be a dead tube, I guess. 34 volts on the number six, which is what we expect because that's tied directly to number two. Um, hmm. Interesting. Let's check some of these pots because they're pretty rusty. So, 9876, I'm on pin 6, and pin 6 ties to pin 2, which ties to the vertical size, and the vertical size ties to B. Plus. So let's see what we got on pin 2 and 6. We have 101 volts. I'm going to adjust this. Well, that seems like that's working. Goes from 123 down to 40. Go ahead. We're calling you to review your Medicare options and help you to get coverage and benefits you may qualify for with your current plan. So, how old are you? Shari Zyrfal Arfer. It's a good thing that you're thinking ahead, but may not be getting all the coverage and benefits you qualify for with your current plan. Let me ask you a few quick questions to see if you qualify. How old are you? Narshar Shalarful. Narshar Shalarful? Well, guess the AI doesn't, uh, doesn't calculate me. All right, so 280 volts here, and that should be 280 volts. Through this vertical size, one okay, one meg stop. But still, this is ice. This is completely isolated 
from everything, whether it's one meg or not, it's isolated from everything except that capacitor. So if that's 280 volts on one side of that and it only goes to 100 and 100 volts here, then we got a hell of a leaky capacitor here pulling that voltage to ground. Okay, we know, we, we're pretty sure we know that. Uh, let's try this one, vertical linearity, pin 3. So pin 1, 2, 3. Okay, vertical linearity. Stand by. Vertical linearity. Vertical linearity is the second one over. Okay, so we have 49 volts there. We'll turn this one, which is freaking frozen. All right, where are the vice grips? Let me get some oil first. Okay, WD-40 has been installed. Now it's time for vice grips. Uh, and there we go. All right, well, we're good there now, but this is, I see this is basically going to ground, so this is isolated off by a capacitor. So we need to use the ohmmeter, probably diode check to check that one. Let's see if we can check the uh, vertical hold, which we can't. Well, maybe, well, well, let's see. I, what we could do is we could connect from pin 6 to 7 with the meter and apply voltage to 7 and then adjust vertical hold. So going from pin 6 to 7, that should be applying voltage to, because there's about 100 volts on 6, and applying that to 7, that should be going through the coil, and then turning the vertical hold should either pull that up or down, and it doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Like turning the right knob, vertical hold, that's it. Huh. Well, that one seems to do something. That's this one. Well, even measuring from pin 3 to ground, I'm back on pin 3. It doesn't seem to do anything, and that's the vertical linearity control. So, let me tip this up and see what's going on with this pot and the vertical hold pot. I'm checking this, which is supposed to be 750 ohms, and I am I, I did follow the lines, and they are connected to the right place, pin 3. So, seems like that's working there, so we'll go over to this side. Corroded ass things, it's hard to get a bite. You have to check both sides of the pot and yes it does look like the pot is bad Let's go back to here we get 723 730 ohms we go to this side oh there we go uh, yeah it's just it's it's just corroded leads so let's see we got these two resistors here um, that have obviously been replaced because I don't know why you need two what are these 15 watt resistors with a with a half watt pot or a one watt pot yeah this is probably all corroded so let me try and measure these resistors alright well this is working this is supposed to be basically 8700 ohms and 750 ohms and this is a biasing network for the cathode of the tube and we know the capacitor is good so these are the basically 9000 ohms 8700 ohm and when I adjust this it works so there's your nine, basically nine thousand, nine thousand seven hundred ohms. So this is, this is working right here. This is not a problem.
Now I'm measuring from pin 8 to ground to check that side of the transformer and I'm getting about 47 ohms. And this capacitor looks really bad. That .05 right there, see it? That paper one? That's uh, the one across the coil here. Now I want to check from pin 7 to vertical hold. Okay, this one here, the top coil is measuring 213 ohms. Okay, vertical hold. 850K with a 350K stop, I'm connected to it. So there we're at one meg. I'll go to the other end. We get to, uh, I don't know, 400K. So we sort of have that right, sort of. Okay, so we're back to the vertical size with a one meg drop, and on this side of that pot, we have on on this side, because we have 234 volts, and on this side we have uh, 95 volts. So that's with it all the way up. So that's one meg because it won't go; it stops at one meg. Um, so that means we have a hell of a lot of leakage here, and it's got to be through this capacitor right here, this 0.047. So I got to find that, and we get that out of there. Maybe because that's holding the voltage kind of down by 50%, it's causing it not to work. I got that capacitor cut out. Look at our voltage now. I'm going to touch the capacitor. Look at that. Look at look at how much look at how much that capacitor is pulling off. It shouldn't pull any of that off. Leaky. Hey, there's our capacitor installed 473. So again, 473 is the same as this. Yellow is 4, purple is 7, orange is 3. 473. And we have 213 volts now versus 90. So a little bit more for the tube, I think. Well, I believe I can hear the vertical oscillator running now. What I should do is get a speaker. We should probe it with a speaker if I could find the vertical output transformer. But I believe I hear it running with that capacitor changed. I'm still low on my uh, cathode voltage on the audio output tube. I should be 150. So I'm thinking that 6V6 I put in there is no good. I should try and find a 6W4. 6W4, 6L6, 6V6 are all sort of interchangeable. 6W6 is pretty heavy duty. It's right under 6L6. All right, well, I put a brand new, new old stock 6W6 in there, and I got the same thing, 113 volts. And the way this is supposed to work, if we can see this, we have our plate voltage. Let me go to the phone. Okay, I hate to do this, but uh, I can see this a lot better anyway. So, um, we have our plate voltage here, which should be 265 volts. And then we should have 148 volts. We should have on pin 4, 280 volts. And that should come over here through a 33K resistor, which should bias the tube on, and we should have 155 volts. So, and the thing is, is this tube is not even getting warm, and this tube should burn me. So what's going on here? So pin 4 should be 280 volts. It's 227. So do we have a low B plus because of these things? We might have low B plus because of these things. And then on pin 5, we should have 148 and we have 99. So is the 33K resistor high? Well, the 33K is measuring 36, so I don't think it's that. But I notice when I pull this audio amp tube, this pre-driver tube out, it the voltages go to where they should be. Well, except the B plus, which is still low. Okay, well, I think we've been successful here. That's a rubber band holding that. There's something wrong, I think, in, in the damper tube because it'll start arcing inside. But let me try and adjust.
and yeah there's no focus but yeah there's the bottom okay that's working I don't know what that is and then this should be that should be vertical speed yeah that's working so it's working now it's just one capacitor keeping the vertical from working Boy, it's so slow. I love the color, though. Yeah, it's it's all working. The vertical is working now. Um. Gonna be able to do anything with this. I we still have this low voltage, and I'm not quite sure what that's about. But yeah, when I turn this on, if I turn this off and let it cool down, this tube will start arcing inside. If I turn it off and turn it back on, the high voltage does not come up, does not start working unless I do this. Could be capacitor issues. Yeah, see there's no high voltage. Oh, there we go. I'll try this at home. But yeah, there's some... Maybe it's the damper tube. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hope that... Typical six... Bad 6AX4... These these tubes, 6AX4, these are very problematic. Try to burn all that crap out of there. Okay, I let it cool off. Let's see. I'm going to turn the light off. All right, let's turn it on and see what happens from cold. It's not going to do it now. There's no high voltage right now there, though. tube issue or a flyback issue or what is this because there's no high voltage maybe this damn thing is just shorted and, and that's it it's just done Oh, there we go. Now there's high voltage. Okay. Rad Tell Tube Company. It's made by RCA. See the circle around the number? It's made by RCA. And it's a 12AX4, which I don't know if I have. So what I'm going to do is I'll use my double diode, my, my double... Uh, uh, microwave oven diode. Ooh, it's from 62. 
someone was still watching this and they say oh, I guess that was a long time ago this is just two microwave oven diodes I believe this will work 6x because we're not doing anything with a filament so let's see if this fixes that issue and then I got this which um, 6aq5 I have just must have a hundred of these tubes so I don't I made this adapter to use there because I don't you know I'd rather sacrifice this than that so just fire it up here Let's see if we get high voltage without any drama with the there could still be a flyback issue or Why is it I don't get high voltage? Let me go to the other tube. You copy? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Abish B. Hi, it's Charles for the police officers. It didn't last long. 120 milliamps on the plate. Oh, as soon as I turned that, it kicked in. Ooh. Very interesting. Let me turn it off and back on. All right, power it back up here. See the horizontal oscillator start there? It went up, boom, it dropped. That's the horizontal oscillator. But still, the high voltage is very low. It's supposed to be 14 kilovolts on this thing. Well, we may actually have some activity here because when I rotate the channel selector, you can see it. Now maybe I put a signal into this thing and see what happens. Okay, this is the weirdest thing ever. I got the VG91 hooked up. We definitely got activity here, and this is the weirdest thing. You can hear the sound through the CRT. Listen to this. Anyway, I can hear it. Uh... Trying to get the horizontal to lock. Ooh. Ooh, what just happened? That's weird. Just died. Did the CRT die? It's not the CRT, it's like we lost the video signal. Well, this is weird, because it's... It, 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 maybe a capacitor shorted. Uh, but it's definitely... It, it, I don't know very bizarre I mean this is a video output right here if I move these IFs around we see some static maybe I'll try going into the video with direct video now what I'm doing is I'm going directly out of the RCA video out into the video output tube there's a test socket right there um, and we have something here See, we want vertical and horizontal hold. Okay, there's vertical hold. That's horizontal hold, but no sink. Maybe it's a long persistent CRT, although it's not that long a persistence because 
you can see the damn thing rolling, but why is there just no sink? And there's the vertical. You can see the vertical there. There the vertical's locked. Uh, let me play with this. Yeah, I don't know. It, it, it seems like it's working. It just seems like the capacitors are all too bad in this one to resurrect. Um, I think this thing needs a complete recap. It's kind of weird how that died like that. You know, the it was working, and then you saw it just die, and it was something in the IF, because I'm going into the video now, and it's obviously working, but yeah, I think these, this thing is just so loaded, all those capacitors are just shorted, so leaky. Probably one of them shorted and pulled the IF voltage down to zero, that's why it um, blacked out like you saw there. Come on, stop. And there's no sink. It's probably capacitors. But hey, I think it's got a good chance of being working. Well, I just checked. And this capacitor right here, this .05, is very leaky in the sink circuit. They're just all very leaky. All of these Bumblebee things are just garbage. If you're new to these sets, and I see a lot of people posting about 50 sets in the groups and that and they always you know why doesn't it work what do i need to do to get it to work well it's not uh not an easy thing you need to spend a lot of time preferably over on a channel like uh, b anderson tv and you need to as the kids rightfully call bob anderson university because to really know how these work and and um uh, you know be good at restoring them uh, fully you you need to go through a university course and that's sort of what he does where this is more along the lines of just a crash course have fun let's see if we can get it to work but uh, anyway go spend a few hundred hours over there after you finish one or two of these videos and and you'll, you'll start to get it but uh, if you're for, not new to these, these things that look like resistors, these black things that look like big resistors, they are capacitors, and their purpose is to block DC and allow AC, allow, allow alternating current to go through. So, For instance, this one down here, that's really hard to see, should have a hundred and about 150 volts on one side and then on the other side it should have six volts well it's leaking a bunch through so one side is real low and one side's higher than it should be so uh, you know like this one that we replaced first thing I want I just want to probe some voltages in here uh, it was working on the tuner and then as you saw it just blacked out so I'm gonna see if something shorted here and killed power to one of the front end tubes maybe the tuner lost power because one of these things shorted they they as they age they turn into resistors and then they'll eventually just short like a piece of wire and that's when things get catastrophic so uh, i'm gonna go through and just check some voltages if i see something abnormal i will alert you here's a look inside the tuner Actually, it doesn't look bad. It looks pretty nice in there. Checked all the voltages. Checked the voltages here, the plate voltages. Wondering if maybe that diode took a dump, the uh, detector diode. I'm measuring the voltage on the detector diode, looking for a signal. Watch this. When I get my hand close to this tube, watch this. So all I have to do is get my hand close to it. So 6U8. wonder if that thing is bad. I clipped out that 047 in the sync circuit and tacked another one in there. Uh, I'm starting to think the way to go about, because this has the lower frequency IF strip. See, the TV's changed from like 28 to 45 at some point. And I'm pretty sure by looking at the size of these coils, these are the 28. 
and this thing only does the 45 so maybe get the 1077 at least that's what I think it is the big big beast and um, yeah I almost trying to figure this out it's a, it's a space constraint with the CRT the using the little CRT I really don't want to do that and almost need like a jig to put this chassis in to hold it upright looks like somebody already had this yoke disconnected so I'm wondering if I just get rid of this yoke and put the tele check thing I bought in here and play with that uh, this is bound to be a disaster um, uh, because this uses a center tope center tapped yoke on the vertical so I just tied them together oh oh did you see that when it first came up it had static Ooh. Looks like it has static right there come on interesting now it seems like we got something there I think one issue we have here is the horizontals way off so I'm um, this is a horizontal oscillator coil right here so what you know when all else fails start twisting stuff you know I need two hands. Okay, let's see. Oh, there it just popped in. Let me turn this down. Because I got this all the way at one side. This is capacitor drift right here. Okay, so that looks... Uh, it looks locked. But where the big girl's at? Oh, 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 oh! Window circle. Almost. Almost. We are almost seeing a picture here on this Tele Sinkler. It's locked in the middle, but I don't know if that really matters because you can almost see the window circle there. We are getting there now. I don't know how you ground the dag on this thing. I don't even see any dag on this thing. Uh, this is displaying an interesting symptom. I'm starting to realize that we've been watching, which is I'm going to turn it on, and you'll see it's going to come up with a really strong signal, high contrast picture, and then boom, it just dies. It'll come up. See see how strong the contrast is here? It's almost overloaded. Now watch. It'll just... Boom, it just dies. That's got to be a tube in the front end. What I'm doing right now is I'm just pulling the tubes out one at a time and letting them cool off. Like I got the second IF tube out. And I'll let it cool off for a minute. Then I'll plug it back in and see if it comes up strong and then dies. And hopefully I can nail it this way. 
Well, I think the problem is is either in the RF amp tube or the RF amp because if I just or in the tuner. So if I if I just clork, I mean I really have to bang on this tube. I mean it's like not even really plugged in right now. It's just kind of like. So yeah, there is an issue there. But hey, we sure are looking better here. Ooh, you see that? Almost got a circle there. Look at that. Holy crap, we are on our way to t the evening news. with COVID O'Donnell. Yes, look at that. Wow. And it's never going to look good on this because it's... Uh, your, your, your yoke is a serious impedance mismatch. Especially with this set. This set is just a trip. So yeah, definitely we are getting there. Like, yeah. So what? What do I do with this freaking tube? Clean these pins. Well, I sanded the pins, and now it's rock solid. What a weird symptom of dirty pins, huh? Warms up after thirty seconds, it stops working, but. Now it's like overloaded with uh, signal. Look at that. Wow. That's uh, 500 microvolts. It starts to overload. Huh. What a difference. Definitely. The vertical hold is really very soft, but um, I think we could definitely get a picture on it now. Look at the ringing here. And it says in the manual, don't pay attention to the ringing. The ringing is just impedance mismatch and having five foot leads on the yoke and the CRT but yeah that's supposed to be um, crosshatch beautiful huh so there you go there's your window circle um, of course it's blurry because there's no focus magnet well, that took me a little bit too long. Well, here it is. And it's not focused, but you can see the the lag in the long phosphor. I wish I had a focus thing for it. Oh yes, the versatility of my decollete control system. God, I wish I could focus it. Let me try and figure something out for that. It's a beautiful blue-white. It's, it's not green, it's a beautiful blue, very blue, like retina burning blue-white. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 12 volts and 12 volts, and I took a, I took a magnet out of an old RCA TV, a focus magnet, and this seems to be working, 
It's just I'm not quite enough voltage here. See, it does dial it in, so I need more voltage. Okay, I figured it out. I'll show you what I did. So this originally had a field coil speaker. What I did is I took this off of an old RCA set, and I put it where the field coil would have been. And then I put this in parallel with it so I could basically dial in a certain voltage. And, and it is trippy the way when they, when they shift from one scene to another, the way it lags and smears. Watch when he moves. Watch when he moves side to side. Look at that. Isn't that cool? There you go. Check that out. Trails. Smudgy. See when he moves side to side, see how it smears yellow? Look at that. Oh, that's safety button. Like a hot knife to butter. Oh, yes. Oh, whoa, that was cool. Wait, let me do that again. Wow. <laughs> and thousands of other children with critical illnesses who are counting on all of us to grant their wishes. Is a radar CRT. When you use your credit card to make your monthly gift, we'll send you this limited edition Make-A-Wish t-shirt. Wow, that's cool. You can count on us to be there for you with a dual complete plan. Readjustable base with qualifying mattress purchase. I don't have the centering magnets on it, so I can't like dial it in perfect, but it's pretty cool. Wow, check that out from the back. Wow. It's bright blue and it trails with yellow. What a cool phosphor. Ooh, cut my meat, Wolfie. It is on three flex pay too, so it's less than ten dollars uh, to get home. Remember, chances. Oh, beautiful. Oh. Wow, that's a trip. Oh my gosh. That's a trip. Psychedelic man, like shrooms, you know. Born and raised, and when I started this clothing line, denim was super important to me. Wow, oh, that's powerful, that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Look at yeah. that, a burger puff. And to make the plants as plump. Getting them seized. Oh, come on, Tammy. Wednesday night on a comedian. That is a trip. Well, we resurrected the TV. I could probably sit here and play with this all night. These old TVs like this always buzz because the alignment is just trash. Ooh, girlfriendy roominess. I'm I 
show you there's that stretch with it. So that's pretty soft, and you don't want to lose the juices. No, you don't want to lose your juices. Commercials are wild because there's a lot of there's a lot of quick cuts. filter but it's not perfect novage is a drug-free way to help flush out allergens mucus and germs using powered suction join nearly three million novage users so you can breathe better sleep deeper snore less and stay healthy smear me it's nice to breathe wow novage clean nose healthy life see what i mean wow commercials are cool So anyway, that's very cool. That's using a, a radar CRT to test. And yeah, we had to come up with a focus magnet. I should try and get a, a permanent magnet set up for this. But I figured it out. You just have to just have to devise something. Anyway, I think we're ready to go back with the original CRT. Put it back in the cabinet. I don't know if this will be part two or of three or part two of two I might I might upload this and then get it back in the cabinet and we'll take a we'll watch it partially resurrected two capacitors that tube that 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 tube that RF tube is bad because I had to take it out again and bang it on the table so it's bad but anyway there you go. Resurrected. <laughs> 